Before we start the reading lesson that I have for you today, I just want to remind you that we're going to write an essay at 12 o'clock, okay? So the 12 o'clock class is for writing. It's the last essay before the exam on Sunday. You're ready for that, aren't you? Okay. I'm really very proud that two out of the top five on the first exam were in this class. I'm really proud, and I expect you to do very well on Sunday. I'm sure you will. And we will spend tomorrow um, working on the essay that you write today. So I will be giving you feedback all day. So in the first two hours, I will give the class a reading task, and then I can sit with you individually and talk about the essay you write today. So you will get the feedback tomorrow before the Sunday exam. Okay? Right. Let's start our reading lesson. I chose an article on science. Why? Why do you think I did that? Why? Because Karim asked for it. He wants to read about science. And because when I asked you to bring me articles about science, remember, they were like, they didn't look so interesting, really. You know, one of them was about bones in space and the other one about cells in space. The only interesting one, and we will be working on it next week, Yusuf, is the multiple intelligences that you gave me. So today we're going to read a scientific article which I hope you will like. Yesterday I asked you to research or look up the meanings of two terms. Do you remember what they were? Okay. Okay, gene mapping and discrimination. So the first thing I want you to do now, please, is to bring out this paper where you wrote down the definition. And all you will need today is that paper and a pencil. You have it, Yara? Okay. You're only two, but they're coming. Marwa, you're with them. So could you please move to the next chair? Okay. Now this is what I want you to do first. I'm going to give you this transparency and I'm going to give you a pen. And on this transparency in your group, I want you to put your definitions together and come up with the best definition for gene mapping, write it here, and the best definition for discrimination, and write it here, please. Okay? So put your definitions together, come up with the best one, that you would like to show the class. Now, it's up to you to choose the person who's going to write. And then, please, Dina. And after you've written it, I will ask one person for the group to come and project it and show it to the class and read it out. OK? Yara? You're the red group. You may need to put this under the transparency. You can keep this and put it under the transparency. Yusuf, this is for your group. A pen. Did I give you a pen? Dina, this is for your group. And you're the green group. OK. It shouldn't take too long, really. About four or five minutes. Good morning, Rita. Uh, Rita and Laila, you're in, yes, you're with Islam and Ahmed and Fadi is with this group. Rita and Laila, we're, yes, bring out your definitions quickly, and Ahmed is writing one definition for the group. So see if you have anything to add. the sentence, Ahmed. What was the sentence? Can you show me the sentence yes. and I'll explain to you why there was a comma there. 
But if you just want to say there is a difference between this and that, you wouldn't put a comma there. Was it this kind of sentence? Okay, show it to me. Okay. Yusuf, are you ready? Yes. Right. I will take the transparencies, please. Can I have yours? Because you have to stop writing. Fedi, can I have yours? Okay. Dina? Thank you. Yusuf? Who would like to start? Laila? Okay. Yours is the blue one. Okay. We switch on the OHP and you just read your definition. Yusuf, are you done? Yes, we're done. Okay. We just wait for Nirvana to give us a rest. No, no, no. But so that we all listen. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please read your definition. Definition of gene mapping. It is a scientific process of matching or studying uh, genetics by chromosomes or uh, the de determination uh, of the sequence of genes and their relative distance from one another on a specific chromosome. Very easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Discrimination. Uh, to treat someone unfairly because of their religion, race, or other personal features, or to recognize the difference between things. Thank you very much. Sorry. Yeah. You're next? Yes. So please come, Dina. Which one was yours? The, the green, green one. one. Okay. Uh, the first definition is the uh, gene mapping. We have the process of determining where specific genes are located on individual DNA. And the second uh, definition, yeah, I can make it more clear. Go ahead, please. Uh, like, uh, like, a, like a normal uh, map can distinguish between towns and, and cities. There is a, a map in the spinal cord which, uh, which can uh, locate where the special genes uh, are. Uh, Thank you, Dean. This makes it very clear. Thank you very much. What about discrimination? Uh, discrimination, I have to make a clear distinction or to differentiate. And the other one is uh, treating one person unfairly over another according to factors unrelated to his ability or potential, uh, like sex or national origin. Thank you very much. Next, the red group. Fedi. Okay, the gene mapping can be defined as locating the position of genes in a chromosome. And a chromosome is a nucleus of element that contains the DNA. The definition of discrimination, it's an unfavorable or unfair treatment of a person or class of persons in comparison to others who are not members of the protected class because of race, sex, color, religion, or national uh, origin. Or Do you have any questions for Fedi? No. Thank you. Excellent. Next. Sounds like you have the same source. Yes. Excellent. Now, where did you look up the definitions of these two terms? Internet. All of you? Dictionary? Did you find gene mapping in the dictionary? No. Okay. I must say, they're excellent. Now, I would like you please to think for a minute and to tell me, what is the link between gene mapping and discrimination? Do you see a link between them? What about gene mapping and discrimination or discrimination and gene mapping? What is the link? Uh, so 
I think uh, with gene mapping, we can, uh, by gene mapping, uh, know uh, how uh, a baby, for example, before the divorce, he will look like and how, uh, how he, what, he, what his color, what, what will be his race. And, uh, and I think uh, that uh, it can be used in, uh, in a bad way if, uh, if some people, uh, it, can, it can be used in discrimination between the uh, Okay. People. Okay. Um. This is fine, Ahmed, but because the others are still thinking. Are you ready now? Did you hear what Ahmed said? No. Ahmed, please repeat what you said. I'm sorry because the others were still thinking, but I think you're ready now. Have you found the link? You have something to tell me? Let's see. Yes, Ahmed. Uh, I said that uh, the gene mapping is uh, some way to uh, how to uh, uh, determine uh, the races or, or the, the color of the, for example, uh, of a baby before he is born or something. Okay, we have the definition yeah. now. Therefore, Therefore, so what is the link? Uh, it can be used in an, uh, uh, any discrimination is also any somehow it's also somehow uh, a way uh, to different any it can be used in the discrimination if people uh, can differ between races and so on. Okay, let's see what Islam wants to say. Yes, Islam. That, uh, discrimination can be uh, Okay. Does anyone else want to say yeah, yeah. some? Yes. Okay. Uh, gene mapping can lead to discrimination because uh, uh, by using gene mapping, some people can have or can acquire specific uh, skills or potentials or, uh, or characteristics. For example, my son, I can pay a doctor to make me very intelligent, or my son make him very intelligent by using genetic. Okay. To make you intelligent, okay, interesting. Do you want to say something in this group? Uh, there is a point yes, of discrimination. <coughs> no, that's uh, genetic discrimination. Okay, and what does genetic discrimination mean? Uh, different genes from different people, and because they are different, there is a it is possible to be discriminated. In what way? How? Because of uh, people are different. Yes. yes. So. So in color. Okay. You're thinking of discrimination, which was one of the two meanings about seeing the differences, discriminating, seeing differences. There were two definitions for discrimination. Is this the one you're talking about, Fedi? Yes. Well, let's see. I'll help you. This is the title of the passage we're going to read. Can you see it? Gene mapping may. I want you to think of the word that should come in the blank, discrimination. It is a word we took at the beginning of the semester. Dina is saying lead to. Think of a better word. Think of a better word beginning with F. Similar, Dina. Lead to is fine. There's another word, then you've got a clue there. Can you count how many dashes there are? Six. It's a word that begins with F. Excellent. <laughs> Clap for Karim. Gene mapping may foster discrimination. So, the next activity I want you to do in your group is this. You already gave me the definition of gene mapping and the definition of discrimination. I want you to think of gene mapping and write down all the words that come to your mind when you think of gene mapping. From the reading you did yesterday, from your background knowledge, from what you already know. Any word that comes to your mind related to gene mapping, please write. Okay? And then do the same thing with discrimination. But I will only, I will only give you three to four minutes on this. All the words that come to your mind when you think of gene mapping, discrimination. Nirvana? Zina? You all got two points for the definitions. For these words, Nirvana, 
for these words, and please number them so that it's easier for me to count them. You will get one point for each word. If it's a really good word that we took this semester, and you feel you can include there, I will give you two points. If it's a phrase, if it's a verb with a noun or a noun that works with this verb, excellent. If it's a verb with a preposition, excellent. These are the words you will get two for. Dina and company are ready. Are you ready? You get one point for each word, Dina. Can you think of more? No? Nirvana, are you ready? You are? Okay. Nirvana, please give it to me. Thank you. Dina? Can we add you? Oh, okay. Dina, do you want to keep it? No. Okay. Because Nirvana took it back to add a word. Yes, we are. We should. I, if you're ready. Okay, keep it. Enough? Fedi, Yara? No, you're not supposed to really. <laughs> it's about the words that come to your mind. That's no, okay. Thank you. Dina? Dina, we're going to start. Okay. We'll start. Is this okay? Can we start with Dina's group? I was going to read them, Dina. Just to move faster. Is this okay? Right. From from the green group we have under gene mapping we have genes, nucleus, molecules, spinal cord, chromosomes, structure of genes. What is this, Dina? Information. Okay, and what's the verb? Determine. Determine. Okay. Be careful, Dina. Location, DNA. Nine words. Under discrimination, they have differentiate, discriminate against. Excellent. You get two for this one. Why am I going to give them two for this one? Okay. Distinction. <laughs> Distinction, racist, sex, origin, racism, humiliate. Humiliate, Dina? Yes. Okay. Prejudice, bigotry, bias. Excellent. So you get 9 and 12. 9 and 12 is what, 21? From the black group... Hereditary, there's a problem with the spelling, but that's okay. I won't count the spelling. Hereditary, inheritance, chromosomes, DNA, genes, genetics, history, family tree. Interesting. Family tree. Okay. 
war, violation, violate, excellent, Unf unfairly treatment. Who's responsible for this? Where's the black group? Which group is it? It's your group? Yeah. And before the noun, you put the adverb? Is this fair? <laughs> okay. You copied! <laughs> you know, Nirvana Azra Akbar Nizam? You weren't supposed to copy, my dear. Okay. Uh, superiority, global injustice, very nice to terrorism. What is this? This is from the German school. Yeah, this is from the German. It sounds German. What is this, Nora? Is this how we say it in English? Yeah. Why didn't you help her, Ahmed? Why didn't you help her, my dear? This is your domain. He's from the German school. Okay, so you have seven, eight, ten. I will be nice and count this one. Eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I will even count this one. So you have sixteen. From the red group, it seems you're not very happy with gene mapping. DNA, chromosome, genes. Thank you. Gene mapping, genes. Where's the red group? Quality. Quality, not quantity, of course. Gene with genes. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Discrimination. Racial segregation. Very nice to for <laughs> national origin, physical, mental, physical, mental what? Yeah. Mental yeah. handicap. Oh, I see physical handicap, men mental handicap. I should give you two because these are really two. Unfair treatment, good. Sex, ethnic, bias, prejudice, bias, prejudice. I agree, I agree, I am sorry. <laughs> Because we took this word last week. Excellent. We're 27, sorry. You became 27. Yes. Okay. 27. And did I add up these? 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. 16. 17? Which come from? No, 16. <laughs> Last group, blue, DNA, chromosome, genetics, inheritance, hereditary features, very good handwriting, very good spelling, race, gender, segregation, diversity, excellent, tolerance, excellent, discriminating, civil war. What shall I give them two for? Tolerance. Tolerance. For diversity? Tolerance. For tolerance? That's it? Segregation. Segregation. For seg there was segregation in the first one. Well, I Did I give you two for segregation? I gave you two? No, no, no. There was racial segregation. Then I'll give them two. Thank you, Nirvana. OK, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16. Three 16s and one 27. Where's the 27 group? Wow. OK. Now. Remember the title of the passage because we're going to start reading now. No, not yet. Sorry. Now you know the title of the passage. Gene mapping. What, what came before foster? Gene mapping? May foster discrimination. I would like you, please, to think and write down two questions that you think this article will answer. Is the title clear? The link between gene mapping and discrimination. Gene mapping may foster discrimination. Think of two questions that you think this article will answer. And we're going to start reading. Just write down two questions. You may need this. Now be careful when you write questions, please. They have to be grammatically correct.
right side. I think you're ready with your two questions. Nirvana? Yes? You're writing that? <laughs> you need to come out and read it. Yeah. You're going to come out and read it. Just Dina, please come. May, would you like to come and read the questions this time? Come, please. A third? Or change one? Two? It's enough. It's enough. We only want two because we have to start reading. Come on, May. Uh, what do you think? You like them? Yes. Excellent. Next group, Fedi, please come up. Or maybe Yara, Yara, please come up this time. Sorry, Fedi. Marwa, come on, you were coming. Come on. First question, uh, in what way does in mapping foster discrimination? And uh, second one, how to curb such a phenomenon? Number one is excellent. In what way does gene mapping foster discrimination? Excellent. But think about number two. Think of the grammar in number two, please. Such phenomenon. Do I see a verb? Do you see a verb there? Fragment. Fragment. Okay, fragment. Are there questions? Okay. Can you correct it? How Come on. Can, how can we curb Excellent. Say it again, Yara. How can we curb such a phenomenon? Okay, thank you. Next group. How can a gene mapping foster discrimination? Uh, the second question um, How will gene mapping affect people's lives? Is there? You want to correct something in number two? Life. Don't you? Life. 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 Yes, okay. Affect, not affects. How will gene mapping affect? Okay, what else, Dina? Lives. Lives. Okay, very good. For, where's the fourth group? Come on, Yusuf. questions are really similar, right? Very good. Now let's see if the art article is going to answer your questions. This is one thing we're looking for because we're going to start reading now. And the second thing is, when we finish, we will do another vocabulary map exercise, like the one we did, all the words related to gene mapping, all the words related to discrimination, and then let's compare, okay? Let's see if you have more words after you've read. Here is the passage. Um, okay, four for this group. Four. Four for you, Yara. Four for you, Nirvana, and Dina, four. Now, this, this article comes from a scientific magazine. And as you can see, there are two columns. OK. I want you to look at the top of the second column on the right. And let's read this. What do we call this? Words between inverted commas. Quote. Excellent. Let's see what this person is saying, because this is our focus now. Without adequate safeguards, the genetic revolution could mean one step forward for science and two steps backward for civil rights. Can you give me another word for adequate? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Safeguards. Safeguards. Do you understand what it means? You understand what it means? Great. Without adequate safeguards, limits. if we're not careful, what, Fedi? Limits. limits. Okay. Limits so that we remain safe, feeling safe. What did you say? Restrictions. Restrictions, okay, so that we 
so that it's safe. The genetic revolution could mean, now focus on this, one step forward for science and two steps backward for, two steps civil, backward rights. for civil rights. This is what I want you to focus on. Now please read in your group and find all the support there is for one step forward for science and all the support for two steps backward for civil rights. Do you get my point? I'm going to give you another transparency for this. Here it is. There's a table there. Remember these tables? You will always have a table in the... The reading task. Where is the reading task? Yeah. Dina, as you read, please write down in points, points, phrases, not complete sentences, all the support for it means one step forward for science, two steps backward for civil rights. Okay? What does support remind you of? And why are we reading for support now? The essay. What did you say, May? The essay. Okay. Okay, and in your essay, how? How, how are you supposed to support your topic sentence and the idea? In your body paragraph. Excellent, excellent. By giving examples. Excellent, facts. Anything? Again, Fezi, sorry? Track the idea to the end. Track the idea to the end, okay. Writing an anecdote. Writing an anecdote, excellent. Giving statistics. Giving statistics, wonderful. Okay, so now in this reading, there is a lot of support for both sides. Please find it and write it down. Now, what would be a good strategy for you to read as a group? You tell me. Are the four of you going to read the whole text? How can, it, how can you do it faster? Uh, some find the reasons for one step forward, and the others uh, the two steps backward. That's a good idea. Did you hear what Islam said? OK, say it again, Islam. Two of the group uh, search for the the one step forward for science, and the other two search for the two steps backward for civil rights. OK, that's one way. Any other way? Uh, you can read together? Can Yusuf, Dina, listen to Yusuf. What, Yusuf? One person can read a third main idea of the article. Remember, we're not looking for main idea. We're looking for, for support. support. We're looking for details to support. So? One person can read it. And the other three? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Is this what you're saying? Okay. One person can uh, search for the word the discrimination and Okay. Fine. I was thinking maybe two two members of the group can read the first column and then the other two are focusing on the second one and then put your points together. Well, it's up to you. Find the strategy you feel you're comfortable with. This is the old group. A skill, a reading skill is making what? Not all the information has to be written down. Uh, that's not what I meant now, Karim. You have to read between the lines, right? You have to make I'm waiting for the word. You have to make what? No. No. Say it, Karim. Come on, say it. You have to make inferences. OK. So you have to be able to read between the lines and make inferences. Something that you understood between the lines and that supports the statement. OK. So not everything is directly stated. OK, Ahmed? Are you OK? Yes.
Is he working with you? Isn't he? Nirvana, are you telling Ahmed what to write for your group? Okay. You don't have to write it in two Yeah. No, no, no. No, in note form, phrases, so you can say widespread fear, that, whatever, but you don't have to write a complete sentence, okay? Okay, can we start? Are you ready? Good. Nora? Wow. They're ready. Yeah, just put it on the OHP and it's here. The button is there. Okay. Right. Now let's listen. Let's listen to Nura's group. Are you still writing? Just one word. Nura, just a second, please. You're done? Yara? Um, yes, Yara? You ready? Can we listen to her? Okay. Dina, come on. It's very, it's very long. Enough. Yes, Nora. Uh, first, to empower for science in the first part of one. Method possible to identify an individual's lifetime risk of cancer, heart attack, and other diseases. Second, improving quality of health care. Uh, there is a widespread fear that individuals' genetic information can be used against them. Conducting genetic uh, testing on FTEs without their permission. Thank you very much. Okay. Next. Who would like to go next? Leila? Okay. No, you need, you, yeah, you have to stop writing now. Yeah. Leila? From Ahmed H's group. The, the, two, the step forward for science is, uh, yes. is that the genetic revolution made it possible to identify uh, the individual's lifetime uh, risk for uh, cancer or um, heart attack or other fatal diseases. Okay. And the second, uh, the second one yani, is uh, genetic testing has uh, enormous potential uh, for improving uh, healthcare in America. What do you notice about this? Heart attack. Did you notice what I noticed? Yeah. Her four? And revolution, you know all these abbreviations. Okay, Laila. Uh, the steps backward for uh, civil rights are uh, uh, there is the, some genetic tests are conducted on the employee, employees um, uh, without their permission. Uh, workers are uh, threatened with uh, dismissal, uh, dismissal unless they agree to the test. Mm -hmm. And a survey um, by the American Management Association found that uh, three um, that uh, there are uh, a use of genetic testing for uh, either uh, job applicants or employees. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. Sorry, Bessem is right. I think you have to move the whole thing, just a little bit to the side. Yes, okay. Uh, I'll step... I'll step forward for science, a uh, new era for medical science. Okay. Uh, improving health care, saving millions of dollars for employers uh, and insurance, identifying an individual's lifetime risk of dangerous diseases. I have a question about number three. Yes. What do you think? 
Point number three, saving millions of dollars for employers and insurance was a yes. step forward for science or backward for civil rights? Okay, can you explain why? Why well, has it been so common? So you can help him explain why. Why should it be in the, on the other side? It was given as an example for what? Because uh, applicants may be rejected uh, from being here. Yeah. But not recruited, yes. Excellent. Because applicants may be rejected if they are. What is the word you read in the text? The word that means. Clap for Fadi. Say it again, Fadi. Even before I gave you the definition. Explain it to her. <laughs> okay, predisposed to yes. illness or disease. Means prone, what? Prone to. Excellent. Prone to or can you think of other words? Yes. Potential. Potential in a way, okay, or likely. Yeah. Excellent, Yara. Likely to get the disease. Yeah. Then employers don't really want them because they will cost them a lot of money in health care. Neither do insurance companies. So this point belongs to backward for civil rights. Okay, go on, Bess. Uh, a step uh, backward for civil rights, a uh, new frontier for potential uh, discrimination. Mm -hmm. Uh, discrimination against employees in hiring and promotion, mm -hmm. uh, unequal opportunity for jobs, uh, genetic information can be used against people, and uh, denying one's right to compensation work instance. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, next group, Yara. Thank you very much. The steps you switched them. Yes. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. The steps backward for civil rights. Uh, first, using productive genetics to identify in advance and then reject workers or policy applicants who are predisposed to develop chronic disease. Excellent, Yara. I would like you please to explain predictive genetics from the reading. Um, yes, they can help you. So your group can help you. Come on, you know the word. Genetics right. is layer, uh, lower examination of uh, <coughs> medical regulation. Medical prediction? Listen to Kerry. Predictive genetics. This is where they have there. Yes. Okay, it comes from predict, you know, predict, don't you? Okay. What kinds of these or you said medical prediction? Yes. And I didn't hear? Yes. Sorry. Excellent. <laughs> okay. There's another word I wanted you to explain, Yara. Chronic disease. Chronic disease. Severe or severe? We met this word before. Yeah, severe disease. Is it severe? Kind of permanent. Okay. What did you say, Martez? No Therefore, way. it comes. Yeah, what it is the comes word I want? Ahmed H. What is the word I need now? A disease that. Yeah, it comes from time to time. What's that the word? Consequently. No. Re. Renew. Re. It appears again and again. Yes. See. Re recurs. Recurs. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Number two. Recalls. She was close. She was close. close. And what is the meaning of recall? Like, repeat? Is this what it means? Here's the dictionary. It means remember. Yes, yes. Yara? Okay, the other step is individuals' genetic information will be used against them. Example, dismissal from work. Thank you. Okay. Steps forward for science. First, um, new genetic research may make it possible to identify an individual's lifetime risk of cancer, heart attack, and other diseases. Therefore, can you elaborate on this? Why is this a good thing? Why is this a step forward? Yes, Martha. Okay. 
Good. Okay, the other step is um, genetic testing. It has enormous potential for improving healthcare. Very good. So they're really related. Yes. This is what it means. Okay, thank you very much. This was excellent. Now, let me ask you for some of the words that you met as you were reading. What was the adjective which means likely to happen, possible to happen? Excellent. Okay. Um, what are the different forms of discrimination that were given as examples there? Racial, ethnic, and sexual. Okay, good. Which paragraph? Second. Third. Fourth, actually. The paragraph beginning with thus. Excellent. Now, um, in what is the verb that was used that means to get rid of patients' fears? Eliminate. Excellent. Eliminate. Say it again, Fedi. Eliminate. Eliminate fears. Excellent. What is the example? Who can explain to me the specific example that was given in the second column? In the in the first two paragraphs, please read them again quickly and explain to me the example that was provided about what genetic, genetics, how it is a form of discrimination there, how it is serving the employer and not the employee. At least one worker was threatened, right? Yes, okay. Dismissal, um, dismissal, um, unless he uh, agreed to, to the test. The agent Okay. Why did they want him to take the test, Yara? What? Okay. You have to go to the next paragraph and tell me why they wanted to conduct this test on these workers. Why? As the result of carpet and before that, why were the genetic tests being run on the employees? For a compensation. Excellent. For a compensation. Because? Tell us, Fedi. Uh, because they seek a compensation. Okay. They were asking for a compensation. For what? For a the kind employees, the workers. Yes, for a, for a kind of disease they acquired. Okay. Because they were working as? As a keyboard operation. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. So this is why the employers wanted to conduct these tests. And prove what? Prove they are really uh, had the disease. Uh, that's not the word, had the disease. Yeah. Genetics was going to help them prove that they were, the word you said two minutes ago, predisposed to the disease. OK, good. What is the verb that was used in this paragraph with no, it wasn't used with the noun. But what is the verb that was used, which means take someone to court? Sue. 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 Is Sue in this paragraph? Yeah. Sue is a word you know. <laughs> it's not a paragraph. Lawsuit. What? With lawsuit. What is the verb with lawsuit? Charge. Charge? No, you don't charge a lawsuit. Okay. Say it. My File. File a lawsuit. There's filed in this paragraph. File a lawsuit. In which part of this text is there a solution for all of this? In the first column. Well, the paragraphs are not numbered, so we have a problem. First column on the left or the column on the right? A solution is suggested. Left? There's a solution on the left? Where, Fadi? On the right. Okay, which paragraph? Burlington is paragraph number one. Two, three, four. Excellent. Fourth. Can you tell us what the solution suggested yes. is, Bethan? Uh, introducing. Transmission uh, is a new federal law that specifically prohibited. Okay. Can you explain it in your own words? Uh, the only solution to this potential discrimination is? Okay. Prohibit it. Ban it by? By law. Very good. By federal law. OK. Now we have to stop here. It's Wednesday. I would like you, please,
to skip the next page and answer the questions on page 166, true false statements. Skip the next page that has discussion and composition and do the vocabulary from context on page 168. Okay? okay. So the true false statements and the vocabulary from context on page 168 for tomorrow. I think they were interested in the topic. They did their homework, they researched the definitions. Um, the group work, I thought, went very well. I felt um, the idea, the question about finding the support was very, very relevant because an essay examination is coming up on Sunday, so I wanted them to see and find the support in the text. It's like the, I, I tried to integrate reading with writing and some grammar when they had to write questions, so I felt this was good. I felt they were responsive, except for one difficult student here who is usually like this, but otherwise I felt the group work went well because all of them were working. They were all contributing to the task. And I thought they were on task all the time. They were actively uh, involved in what they were doing. They were on task and it's like, I felt it did go well. There was no time wasted. We do a lot of group work. They enjoy doing group work very much. And I believe that they can learn from each other and I felt it happening today. They were learning from each other. They were, ha they were helping each other. So I don't believe that the teacher is the only person they can learn from. No, if they're kept actively involved, working together, they can learn from each other. It happens all the time. So I like doing group work. They enjoy doing group work. Sometimes if I don't do it in one class, they ask for it. Miss, let's work in groups. Now it becomes a problem if I'm doing a test and I really want to kind of, you know, look at individual performance, then it becomes a problem. And they say, why don't we do it in groups? Believe me, sometimes I decide that if they are going to learn from each other, okay, and I switch and I say, fine, then do it in groups. Sometimes I do that, you know, on the spot. I make the decision, go ahead and do it in groups, because I feel they will learn from each other. But today, I must admit, I felt one group was stronger than the others. And I think I told them I shouldn't have put Dina with Karim. We agreed on these groups yesterday. I changed. We don't have the same groups. No, we don't. Never. Sometimes they choose their own groups, so I choose three people, and I say, now you choose your group, each of the three. Sometimes I do it, sometimes they get into their own groups and it's fine with me. But yesterday, I think to save time, I asked them and I made the lists of the four groups. I thought it would save time, you know, as soon as they come in, they know in which group they are and not waste time uh, deciding who was with who. But I put Dina with Karim and they're the two best. I won't do it again. They choose their groups, they choose reading articles that they can bring, but um, at the beginning of the lesson I told them this time I had to choose the scientific article because the ones you chose were not so, I mean, they themselves weren't. I kind of felt they just chose the first article they found on the internet and that was it, but it's kind of, I even asked them. I showed them to them last week and I said, do you really want to read this? So, but they can choose the articles. They can choose when to do a test, when we're ready at the end of a theme or a unit, and we have all of that vocabulary. They choose when they want to do the test. Um, they, what other choices can they make? Sometimes it's an optional assignment, and they choose whether they want to do it or not. And believe me, when it's optional, they do it. And when it's an assignment for tomorrow, a few of them won't do it. Uh, we give a lot, of, a lot of homework, I must say, because we believe that exposure is extremely important. So it's in the morning for five hours and at least three hours in the afternoon. They're not very happy with this. So I give them choices. 
So uh, it's like some assignments are optional. We have a grammar book. They can choose whether for the 12 o'clock class they want to do grammar or essay writing. We're supposed to do one hour of grammar and one hour of writing, but I feel it's much better to do two hours of essay, two hours of grammar the next day. So I, they can choose whether they're ready to write the essay tomorrow or the day after, this is okay. From the beginning of the semester, I talked a lot about reading skills and strategies that good readers use. Um, they come from schools where they were not encouraged to read enough and they don't come with the reading skills they need in AUC. We are aware of this. They don't read enough and they don't have the skills or the strategies. So I talked a lot about it at the beginning of the semester. If you notice when I talked about making inferences, guessing meanings of words, I was going to go into finding the clue that helped them guess the meaning of a word, but we didn't have time. But I will go into this tomorrow. So it's like, um, I think that awareness and consciousness raising is extremely important, right? So I raise consciousness all of the time and I say, what is a good strategy? But you know, when they suggested different strategies to complete the task, I accepted them all, oh, fine, wonderful, if it works with you, great. Except for the group, you know, he was, he was joking when he said one person reads and the others wait. So, um, yes, consciousness raising I think is extremely important. I talked to them about skills. This is why they said scan, skim. So uh, they mentioned skimming, they mentioned scanning, they talked about making inferences, and I was glad that they know that these are good reading skills they're required to have. They can learn from each other, and they can assess each other, and they become aware of what is good and what is not good by seeing each other's work. We do it in the essay class. We do a lot of peer editing in the essay class. But they have a focus, focus on content only. How good is the content and how can this writer improve the content or focus on proofreading, editing, because this is a skill that you need to edit and proofread. But they usually don't have time. They complain that there's no time to proofread the essay, which is why there are so many language mistakes. But when they read each other's essays, especially after the last exam, I said exchange essays and read them. This is why this essay got a four for content or a three for language use or a 4.5 for vocabulary. Read it. It's good to read your peers' work. They learn from each other, definitely. I prefer that they all win. Or they're the same, you know. The definitions, they were fine and, and all of that, but it's kind of, uh, I like it when they all win. I think it's very important. So it's like uh, everybody, has, uh, everybody has a role. Everybody has the chance to stand up and speak, to represent the group, to read out what they've written. And I think they enjoyed it. They were OK. So it's true they can choose in their group. But I wanted to make sure that everybody got the chance to stand up in front of the class and share their work. It's important, I think. Uh, I wanted to read about science. They've had enough. The last unit we were doing was about education. The one before was about the environment. The one before was about um, the 20th century and beyond. So it's like they were mostly in the humanities, I think. And I felt that now we want to read about science, talk about science, and I think the change was interesting for them. We just finished the unit on education, and it's like education, education, enough. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm not quite sure I understand the meaning of gene mapping. They had these complicated definitions, right? But I think I, I understand enough. <laughs> we are going to go on to talk more about it tomorrow. So I will check the assignment I gave them. And then we will definitely talk more about how each one feels about this genetic revolution. And if they are for knowing one's genetic history or against. As a matter of fact, the next activity was going to be about this. But I didn't have time, so I'm keeping it for tomorrow. So I prepared the pros and cons chart about knowing your genetic history. And individually, they can fill out the chart and then get together into groups and kind of agree on whether they're for or against knowing your genetic history. But I agree with you, it is a cultural thing. It's interesting. 
but they do have opinions. This is also to prepare them for the essay we're going to start after the next exam, which is argumentation. So it's kind of, I want to make them aware of the fact that they need to know the list of pros and cons in order to be able to write an argumentative essay. So I'm linking it to writing. So we will do this activity tomorrow. We don't have time today. But it's good to be over-prepared. 